Hi everybody, Amber here from Atomic Photography, bringing you tips and tricks on beauty, fashion and travel photography. In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about how to take better photos on your iPhone. As some of you know, I travel a fair amount. I usually travel with my 10 year old daughter, Lana, who you may have seen on my channel before as well. And increasingly we're taking more and more photos on my iPhone and it's really powerful. It's easy, it's immediate. It's not at the expense of my big SLR camera, but there's some benefits around speed and ease of using an iPhone to take photos. So some of you have been asking me, how do I achieve the results that I do on my iPhone? So I thought I'd make you a quick video to show you a couple of my tips on how I take my photos, and hopefully that will inspire some of you guys too. <laughs> One of my biggest tips around taking a good photograph is around composition, and composition is how you frame your image. I tend to use the rule of thirds, it's a grid system, so it's a three by three grid, I'll put it up here, and what I try to do is to put my subject, which is usually Lana, in the left or right third of an image and put their head in the top third. And what that does is it helps to give a sense of your location as well as your subject, which is fantastic for travel photography and also just to evoke a mood to show where you are uh, as a location. A lot of phones, I've got the iPhone 7 so I can, I can show you on that, but um, a lot of phones have grid lines. So enable your grid lines and it will help you. And just think about, let me put my subject to the left or the right and let me put their head in the top third of the image. And it just looks so much better than if you just point and shoot. And point and shoot, by the way, is one of the worst terms that has come about in photography for me because just don't point and shoot. So what a lot of people do with their iPhones, and it's the most natural thing to do, but they just hold it at arm's length, straight in front of you, you hold it out and you try and take a picture. And what that does is it can distort a perspective, particularly if you're shooting something that's lower than you. So if someone's sitting down, or if you've got, if you're trying to shoot children, if you're shooting from above, you won't get as nice a perspective. So what I try and do when I'm shooting is I'll try and get down to the level of the person that I'm shooting. Generally, you want to hold the device at somebody's waist level and take the picture from there. And it just gives a much better perspective. You're shooting from slightly lower upwards, which makes them look a bit taller and it just gives a much, much nicer angle for the picture. And you'll see a lot of photographers when you look at behind the scenes videos, they're crouching down, they're, they're moving around the subject because you wanna try and get different angles when you're shooting. It only takes you a couple of seconds. You don't have to go crazy and take a million pictures. Just try to get a better perspective than just a, a straight point and shoot. Don't do that. So my next tip is around lighting. It's really quite important to try and get as even a light on your subject as possible. That's not always easy if there's harsh sunlight outside or you have very low light situation, but as far as possible, try and think about, just take a couple of seconds before you start snapping, just to look at the light. And there's an example I'm gonna give you now, where there was, we were in the park, Lana and I, and we were making a part of this video. And the sun was setting and when I took a photo of Lana, the sun was setting behind her and she's come out quite dark. All we did was we took two seconds, we just swapped places and I put her, just turned her around and the sunlight was then coming on her face and you can see that it makes for a much, much even lighting situation. So literally just by moving and swapping places with your subject or just turning them around can give you a much, much better lighting condition. 
You can also control the exposure on your phone. So that's how bright or how dark an image is. And you can tap different parts of your image to expose different parts of the image correctly. So if you click on the sky, it will expose the sky. If you click on the subject, it will expose the subject correctly. So you have a lot more power than you think you might have around controlling the lighting situation. Another little feature on the camera is if you tap and you hold it down and you slide your fingers, you can actually manually set the brightness of the image or the exposure of the image to whatever you want to set it out. So more power to you, get learning around the settings on your camera and you'll have a lot more control over how you sort of, you know, capture the light in your image. Another really good tip for travel photography in particular is if you want to get some really nice images from your trip, I would wake up really, really early get to the tourist spots before all the other tourists do. Generally, it tends to get busy after nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. So Lana and I try and get to places at about seven o'clock in the morning. I know that sounds a bit harsh on a, on a holiday, but it just really makes for such beautiful imagery. And I'll show you a couple of examples here where we woke up and you can see that they're, they're really famous landmarks, uh, whether it's in Florence or in Rome, and you just wake up early and there's no one around. Um, so no one's ruining your, your composition or taking away the focus from your location or your subject. And it's just really worth doing. And I've managed to capture some really pretty images. A lot of people think that I Photoshop people out. No, I just get there early. It's really simple. <laughs> Another thing that I try to do with my imagery, particularly in travel photos, is try to get a point of interest into the picture, not just standing in front of a landmark, but uh, and not just the landmark on its own, but maybe some props like a balloon or some flowers. Also using motion as a point of interest. So there's a cute little thing that Lana and I do. She stands with her back to me and I count down one, two, three, and she turns around and it just gives some movement in her dress or whatever she's wearing. So think about how you can make your photos a little bit more interesting than just standing like soldiers in front of a monument. Another little trick on the iPhone is to use the portrait mode. Portrait mode on an iPhone is available, I think in iPhone 7s and above, and what it does is it blurs your background for you. So you get a bit of a depth of field effect going on, which is beautiful for headshots, portraits, and uh, pictures of flowers if you want to blur the background and really focus on your subject and blur your background. It makes for a lovely, lovely image. You also get to um, take photos that almost look like they've been taken on a digital SLR. So yeah, have a bit of a play with the portrait mode. So finally, I want to talk to you guys about developing your images or editing your images. Now in the olden days, when we used to shoot on film, yes, I'm old enough to remember shooting on film. We used to have to send the reel of film away to a photo laboratory or a pharmacy to develop the pictures. And in that developing process, they would be editing the photos. They would boost colors, they would adjust lighting, and they would make your images pop more than how you had shot it. Increasingly with mobile devices and with that whole point and shoot generation, there's a point shoot and upload generation and people are forgetting to do the middle step, which is the development of your images or, or the editing of your images. And for me, editing is just being able to rebalance what the camera settings did to my picture. So sometimes the camera will wash out colors, it will overcompensate for lighting situations and make pictures quite contrasty. So I will use my editing apps to readjust my picture to be closer to what I was seeing in the scene. And it might be that I was in a place that was sunny and warm, but my pictures come out a little bit cool, so I want to make it warmer, etc. And I wouldn't be nervous about these apps. Some of these apps are really easy to 
to use. Um, I'm going to jump into a screen recording and show you how I edit my pictures. I'll take one example, I'll show you the types of things that I do. I'm going to use Lightroom mobile app as an example. Um, I hope you find that useful. So from the iPhone I'm just going to jump into Lightroom and in Lightroom you can see there's images from my camera roll in here so I'm just going to pick uh, one of the images from the park so I'm just going to edit this image and as you can see it's a nice image I could leave it as it is but actually Based on what I could see with my eyes, this is a little bit washed out and a little bit contrasty. So I'm going to go into the light settings and I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit and I'm going to bring up the shadows. I'm going to lighten those shadows so that it doesn't look as contrasty as it was. And then from a colour perspective, this is looking a little bit cool. It was sunset and it was quite warm where we were. So um, I'm just going to bring that yellow up and then I'm going to bring the vibrance up because it was a lot more. The colours have been washed out by the camera. It was looking a bit green. So we're going to bring that tint up a little bit. And that's pretty much as much as I would do for this image. So if I show you before and an after, and a before, and an after. You can see that just with a couple of really simple adjustments, you can make an image really pop. So those are just a couple of the ways in which I make my iPhoneography look the way that it does. I hope that's inspired you to get out there and try out some of these tips too. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. It really makes a difference to my channel. If there's any topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section or DM me. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.